Hello, it's Pastor Ken from Northminster Presbyterian Church. Uh, and uh, I want to read from Luke uh, 1, 11 to 17. On the right side of the altar of incense, an angel of the Lord appeared. This terrified Zechariah, and he fell before him out of fear. The angel said, Zechariah, don't be afraid because your prayers have been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will have a son and you will call his name John. There will be a great, there will be a lot of joy, celebration, and many will be glad. Many of the sons of Israel will return to the Lord, his God. He will go before God in the spirit and power of Elijah and turn the father's hearts to their children and the disobedient, disobedient to an attitude of righteousness. He will prepare people for the Lord. You know, seeing this angel and the altar must have terrified Zachariah. It certainly would have terrified me. And it's no wonder that the angel's first words are, don't be afraid, Zachariah. Zachariah would have been the only person in this room. No one was allowed in this special place. Zachariah would have immediately recognized it for what it was, a divine act. Yet even more divine and more surprising was the message the promise that the angel gives to Zechariah, that God not only heard the prayers of Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, but remember they were childless, but that their son would one day lead people back to God. There was hope for the people of Israel. We need to be reminded that Zechariah Elizabeth and the Hebrew, pe Hebrew people lived in a time when people's hearts were either captivated with the mighty empire of power, false peace, and materialism, or felt as if God had abandoned them, forgotten them. Yet this faithful couple was told that their son would do God's work. Lives would be changed. God had not abandoned Israel and will be revealed, and as will be revealed later, God would continue his redemptive plan for the whole world. Christmas has always been counter-cultural. Christians took December 25th, which, which was a spectacular pagan holiday in the Roman Empire, which celebrated the birthday of Mithras, among others, a Persian god. And Christians turned it into a celebration of Christ as king. Christmas was an in-your-face celebration, stating that there was only one God, and that that God had come into this world in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ, that God had intervened in time and space, space with a promise of bringing true peace, true joy, and true salvation to all people. Christmas boldly states that lives will be changed. So as we reflect on this passage and we reflect on Christmas during this Advent season, we too need to be aware that we still face the alluring power of false empires, securities, peace, and materialism. Consumerism seeks to capture our hearts and distract us from the daily presence of God, especially during this season of Advent. And so how are you and I praying for God to appear in our lives this Christmas? Are we longing to see that message of hope? I hope so. Please pray with me. Lord, appear to us where no one else is allowed. And sometimes that is the altar of my heart. Appear in our lives to offer us hope and then give us boldness to offer the same hope to others so they too can turn to you even in the dark times. May we fall before you in love and before you in faithfulness. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful day and a great week. God bless you.